Shalom, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. This is the homily for the fourth Sunday of Easter, year B. The theme that I've chosen for the Sunday is Trusting the Good Shepherd. The fourth Sunday of Easter is traditionally called Good Shepherd Sunday because that is the theme of the gospel that had previously been the gospel of what we today call the third Sunday of Easter. But during the revision of the lectionary, the church's book of readings, after Vatican II, the gospel of the Good Shepherd was pushed off one week to allow more gospels of Jesus' post-Easter appearances to the apostles to be read. Example, Jesus on the road to Emmaus last Sunday gospel reading. Today also marks a shift in the post-Easter gospel readings. Whereas the previous two Sundays focused more on concrete events in terms of Jesus' post-resurrection appearances, the emphasis today and for the upcoming Sundays moves to Jesus' teaching about his impending ascension and the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. What is the purpose of Good Shepherd Sunday? Its primary purpose is to reflect on the image of Jesus as the Good Shepherd, as described in John chapter 10, verse 11 to 18, and to deepen our understanding of his role as our shepherd and guide. There are five points I wanted to make. Jesus as the Good Shepherd. Good Shepherd Sunday provides an opportunity to meditate on Jesus' loving and sacrificial care for his flock. Jesus describes himself as a good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep, emphasizing his selflessness, compassion, and protection. Number two is identity of the church. Just as Jesus identifies himself as a good shepherd, the church sees itself as the flock under his care. Number three, pastoral ministry. The image of the Good Shepherd is central to the pastoral ministry of priests and bishops within the Catholic Church. Good Shepherd Sunday serves as an occasion for clergy to reflect on their vocation to shepherd God's people with love, humility, and self-sacrifice following the example of Jesus. Vocations Good Shepherd Sunday also serves as a day to pray for vocations to priesthood and religious life. It encourages Catholics to discern how they can participate in Jesus' mission as laborers in the harvest, whether through ordained ministry, religious life, or lay apostolate. The last one is unity and communion. Good Shepherd Sunday highlights the unity and communion of all believers within the church. Jesus speaks of bringing together his sheep from various folds, symbolizing the unity of all believers under his leadership and care. Divinity of Jesus There are several religious groups and movements that deny the divinity of Jesus. Some of these include Jehovah's Witness, Unitarian Universalist, Oneness Pentecostals, uh, Christadelphians, Islam, and LDS in a way. The celebration of Jesus as a good shepherd inherently points to his divine nature within the context of Christian theology. Throughout the Old Testament, God frequently speaks through the prophets using imagery related to shepherding to describe his care and leadership over his people. This imagery emphasizes God's role as the ultimate shepherd of his flock, particularly in response to the failures of human leaders. Here are a few examples. Ezekiel chapter 34. In this chapter, God rebukes the leaders of Israel for their negligence and failure to care for his flock. He declares that he himself will search for his sheep, rescue them, and pasture them himself. God promises to be their shepherd, seeking out the lost, healing the injured, and feeding them with justice. Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 1 to 4. Jeremiah prophesies against the shepherds, leaders of Israel, who have led the people astray. He contrasts them with the righteous branch, a messianic figure, who will arise to shepherd God's people with justice and righteousness. This passage emphasizes God's promise to provide a faithful and righteous shepherd for his people. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 10 to 11. Isaiah speaks of God's sovereignty and care over his people, likening him to a shepherd who gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them closer to his heart. This imagery conveys God's tender care and protection for his flock. These passages highlight God's commitment to shepherd his people himself especially in times when human leaders fail to fulfill their responsibilities. The imagery of God as a shepherd underscores his intimate relationship with his people, his loving care for them, and his desire to lead them into paths of righteousness and abundant life. This theme finds its fulfillment in Jesus Christ, 
who is ultimately revealed as the good shepherd in the New Testament. John chapter 10 verse 11. So when Jesus claimed himself as a good shepherd, he's claiming divinity. Trusting the good shepherd. In the gospel of John, Jesus declares, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. These words reveal the depth of Jesus' love for us. A love so great that he willingly sacrifices himself for our sake. For many of us, fear is a constant companion. Fear of the unknown, fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of suffering. But as followers of Christ, we are called to trust in our good shepherd who promises to never leave us nor forsake us. As St. Peter writes in his first letter, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. First Peter chapter 5 verse 7, our faith in Christ enables us to entrust our fears to him, knowing that he cares for us deeply and will never abandon us. But how does faith help us overcome fear? The answer lies in the very nature of faith itself. Faith is a gift from God, a supernatural virtue that enables us to believe in him and his promises. It is a deep trust in the goodness and providence of God. Even when circumstances seem bleak, as St. Paul writes in his letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verse 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? Our faith assures us that God is with us, guiding us, strengthening us, and giving us the courage to face whatever challenges life may bring. Faith in God can help you to do the right thing. Mother Teresa had gone to Nicaragua with some of her sisters in order to help those sufferings from an earthquake in the capital, Managua. At that time, Nicaragua was run by the Sandinista communist regime headed by Daniel Ortega. At one rally, Ortega, who was supposed to introduce Mother Teresa to the expectant crowd, went on a long tirade about President Reagan and what a horrible person he was. He went on and on about communism and the government, etc., when he had finished, he invited mother up to the microphone. There she was, that diminutive Albanian, so full of life and love. And she said, President Reagan really needs prayers, doesn't he? Yes, he really does, mother, was the response from Ortega, who thought then that he had scored big. But then mother said to him, And so do you. I was talking to your wife and you are a Catholic. Nervous now, Ortega affirmed that he was a Catholic. Mother Teresa said to him, You are a Catholic, but you don't have your children baptized? I want to be their godmother. Your wife told me you have not had them baptized. Let us go baptize them right now. Because if you cannot run your family, you cannot run the country. Amen.